Since the AIDS epidemic, gay men have been prohibited from donating blood. But now, during one of the biggest blood shortages ever, people are advocating for a policy change. Cronkite News reporter John Brown tells us what changes they want to see. COVID-19 has changed all of our lives in some way, but for men of the LGBTQ plus community, they have faced a societal challenge for years, donating blood. It started in 1983. The Food and Drug Administration, known as the FDA, banned men who have sex with men, otherwise known as MSM, from donating blood due to HIV and AIDS concerns. And in 2015, the ban was changed to 12 months. Because there is a massive blood shortage in the United States of America. Since April of 2020, the Food and Drug Administration has said, defer for three months from the most recent sexual contact, a man who has had sex with another man during the past three months. Many are frustrated with the FDA's policy, including Johnny Martin, an openly gay man who is advocating for a change. There's nothing about being a gay person or a gay man in particular that makes my blood any more dangerous or, you know, less desirable when it comes to somebody who, you know, may need their life saved by that kind of donation. The Southwest Center in downtown Phoenix is actively working on countering misinformation about blood donations and offers health care to LGBTQ plus individuals. Over the last 30 years, we've transitioned more into a integrated medicine and wellness clinic. Um, our emphasis will always be uh, founded on HIV treatment and prevention, um, but really recognizing that the wellness um, of our community is really important um, in all aspects. Simon is fed up that policy changes have not been updated, and he says there has been enough research to prove that blood donations by LGBTQ plus men do not lead to diseases like HIV or AIDS. I could go and lie to donate blood, but should I have to? is the question, and, and really that's where the stigma comes in. Congressman Greg Stanton calls the FDA's and other policies anti-science. He says there is no factual evidence to the assertion. But the reality is we need that blood to help save lives, and I know there are so many um, gay men that would love to help others by, uh, by giving blood, so we don't want to engage in self-defeating public policy. All three men hope that there is collective permanent change and stories to tell for generations to come. In the newsroom, John Brown, Cronkite News.